What is up, Flay City family? It's Bobby, and today we're making three soups that are perfect for the fall. Because last week I asked you what recipes for soups you want to see, and the votes were off. <laughs> Shocked. Just like this is off the board. So Jesse and I compiled the winners and we're gonna make them today. And by the way things are going now, it's gonna be a wild and crazy video. So I hope you're ready for roasted butternut squash soup. One of my all time faves with maple syrup, sage and tons of vegetables. A spinach, quinoa and lemon soup that is so easy to make. And my wife's famous lentil soup, which is crazy easy to make, but has so much flavor. So if you love healthy recipes that are so easy to make, hook a brother up and subscribe to my channel. I am rocking out new videos every Friday morning and I would love for you to join the Flav City community. Starting first is honestly one of my favorite and oldest soup recipes ever, a roasted butternut squash soup. And because I like all 10 fingers to be intact, this is my favorite way to break down the butternut squash. Just use a rolling pin to tap the knife right through the center of the squash, and then use your knife to carefully peel away the outer skin. Now I'll admit it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to peel this guy because you don't want to take too much of the flesh away, but you can't use a vegetable peeler, I've tried. So if you know a better way to do this, please leave a comment down below because I would honestly love to know. And then use the old rolling pin trick one more time and scoop out all those seeds. And make sure you guys save these seeds you could roast them in the oven with a little bit of olive oil, salt, and pepper, and they make a killer snack. And then cut everything into large cubes. And then transfer your cubed butternut squash to a sheet tray. And by the way, I'm preheating my oven to 425 degrees right now. Before I toss these suckers in there, I do wanna season them so they get really roasty and golden. So I'm gonna drizzle over two teaspoons of olive oil, pinch over a half a teaspoon of salt, and a few cracks of black pepper. And then give it one good mix up with your hands. Now pop these guys in the oven for 25 to 30 minutes. While the squash is roasting, let's get on with the vegetation portion of the soup. So in this bowl, I have onions, carrots, and celery, and I'm preheating a soup pot over medium high heat. If you don't have a soup pot, get one. This one is amazing. It's cast iron. It fits a lot of liquid in there. I'll put the link down below, but you could even get a cheap metal one. You just have to have a big vessel to make these kind of soups. Go ahead and drizzle in two teaspoons of olive oil and add the veg to the pot. I feel like all good soup recipes start with onions, carrots, and celery. It's just the base for all things delicious. So give that a good mix up. And then I'm gonna sprinkle over about half a teaspoon of salt and a few cracks of pepper. Now a couple of the soups that did not make the cut for this round of videos was my uh, potato leek soup and my ramen soup and my roasted tomato and basil soup. But if this video goes well and you guys love it, just let me know if you wanna see more and we'll do part two of fall inspired soups. I'm gonna let that cook for about eight minutes so a lot of the moisture gets sucked out. Now is the time I wanna reach for three cloves of garlic that I finally minced, add that, and for a little bit of spice, some red pepper flakes. All right, I'm gonna let that cook another few minutes and then is there any other ingredient you could think of that screams fall more than fresh sage? Desi. What's more fall than sage? Butternut squash. <laughs> Luckily I have that. The other ingredient that's very fall is maple syrup. I've got that too. All the fall goodies are going into this pot of yumminess, which is why it's one of my favorites. So I do need to pluck about five leaves of sage here. Well, I could have said the maple syrup. But you didn't say maple syrup. You said butternut squash. It was there in front of her waiting for her to kind of give her the answer, but she didn't take my lead. <laughs> All right, so grab five leaves of fresh sage. Stack them on top of each other, roll them like you're making a Cubano cigar, and just give them a slice. Now before I add the sage, I wanna grab a little bit of apple cider vinegar and splash in maybe a couple teaspoons. The vinegar is gonna help cut through the richness and sweetness of the maple syrup and the butternut squash. Now let's go in with the chopped sage also, and then let that cook for only two more minutes, and then we're ready to toss the roasted squash into the pot. All right, I jacked up the broiler to high for the last three minutes to get that color on there. And what did I tell you? See, that extra step in the oven will give you that caramelization on the squash. That is so much flavor and will give you a ton more flavor than just dumping the raw squash into the soup. And you know, I want you guys to eat flavorful food, so do not skip this step. Now, very carefully, everything's hot. Transfer the squash into the pot, like these pieces right here. I could eat these like fries. They're so tasty. All right, now to reinforce those fall flavors, I'm gonna take some maple syrup 
and don't be grabbing no Aunt Jemima stuff out of your pantry. Get the real deal maple syrup. Go in with about a tablespoon and a half and then you could use water for the soup because there's so much flavor going on in that pot right now, but I always reach for low sodium chicken stock. Desi, why do I do low sodium? <laughs> Desi, you can use vegetable stock, but Desi's only heard me say it a million times, whether it's veggie, chicken, or beef, low sodium because you want to control the amount of salt in the dish. I wish you could have seen Desi's face when she said that. I'm like a broken record. She's heard all my lines at least 150 times. So I'm going to start with a quart and a half. All right, that's one and a half. Now I want to bring this big pot of goodness to a boil. All right, the pot is boiling. I'm going to move it to the back burner for 35 minutes because we need room for the next one. Now, if you're wondering what this bubbling pot has been over my shoulder the whole time, this is beef bone broth. If you follow me on the Flav City Instagram or Snapchat stories, you'll see that I make this all the time. This stuff is so good for you. It's good for your gut, for your immune system, for your skin. What else, Desi? bones and collagen. It does take 12 hours to make, but it's worth it. And we have a batch for the whole week. Perhaps later on in a few weeks, we'll make one of those too. But in the meantime, it's time for Desi's famous quinoa spinach and lemon soup. Uh, all right, I've got another pot of boiling liquid here. Between this and the other two pots, I think I'm gonna be in a sauna here, sweating all over camera. But this is two quarts of water I'm trying to bring to a boil here. A watched pot never boils, and I've been watching it, and it hasn't boiled yet. But in the meantime, I have two six ounce bags of baby spinach. It might seem like a lot of spinach, but it's gonna wilt down to almost nothing like spinach always does. Let's go ahead and add that to the pot. It's hot. Then go in with a teaspoon of olive oil. Desi says more, okay. Make that two teaspoons of oil. What next, Des? Salt and pepper, okay. Let's do a teaspoon of salt and a few cracks of black pepper. Now this is one of those soups that's totally deceptible because it's a water-based soup with only a few ingredients in it. And the first time Desi made it, I was very skeptical, but it has so much flavor and it's so easy to make. We make it all the time now. Well, Desi makes it, but today I am making it, so hopefully I can do her proud. <laughs> all right, bring this to a boil, reduce it to a simmer, and I'll cook this for 20 minutes. All right, it's been 20 minutes. You can see the spinach has kind of wilted down a little bit. Now it's time to get some superfoods into this soup. I'm gonna measure half a cup of quinoa and get that in the pot. What made you put quinoa in this recipe? Uh, it's better than rice. <laughs> and because I always have like a huge stock of it in the pantry because I eat it every morning, possibly. I think this is influenced by Bobby. Otherwise, Old right? Old Desi would have done rice here. All right, how long do I cook this for, babe? All right, 15, 20 minutes back on the clock. Let's get my continue lifting in here. I'm gonna swap out this pot for the butternut squash. I think that one is ready. All right, somebody tell me when this pot is boiling. It's getting really, really hot in here. The sweat is coming down, but it's worth it because these recipes are so worth sharing with you. This has been bubbling away for 35 minutes and look at the consistency, you guys. It's kind of thick. The color of the soup is that brilliant orange butternut color. Now, to make this soup grandpa approved, nice and smooth on his gums, I'm breaking up my immersion blender. Now this is great because you don't wanna transfer this stuff to the blender, ideally, because it's very hard to blend hot liquids. If you do it, only fill it halfway and put a towel over the top because hot liquids have a way of exploding out of the blender all over your face and it hurts like a biatch. So, if you don't have one of these immersion blenders, I'll put a link down below. They're like 20 bucks. And look how easy it looks like. Some people call this a motorboat. And yes, it kind of looks like that and sounds like it. But just keep going until the soup is super creamy. All right. What do you think of that texture, Des? Right. That looks good, but we have to check for seasoning because I guarantee it's gonna need more salt. It always does. Wow, the texture is so creamy, which is crazy. There's no dairy, no cream in there. It's just all that natural goodness blended together. But yes, it does need another little pinch of salt and one last stir. Now you want this to be a thicker soup, but you could always thin it out with a little more chicken stock. And this is one of those soups that gets better the second and third day, so you're gonna love this recipe. All right, this is done. Let's finish up the spinach and quinoa soup as soon as that quinoa is done boiling. All right, 
my quinoa is almost boiled, but in the meantime, if you're new to my channel, normally I do healthy meal prepping for the week with a focus on weight loss. I have 48 of those videos, so after this one, make sure you check out the other ones. Now to finish this soup is Desi's famous touch. In this bowl, I have two eggs. I'm gonna add the juice of one lemon to that. And Desi, what's the uh, word for this called? In Bulgarian, it's called zestroika. Zestroika, I just love that word. So add the juice of one lemon and then whisk it up. I guess the equivalent would be like maybe a Greek egg, egg drop soup. No, we're There's no equivalent. It is uniquely Bulgarian technique. Zestroika. There is no other besides zestroika. Well, typically we add a, a couple of tablespoons of yogurt. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I want to make this dairy free, but you could add a couple of tablespoons of Greek yogurt to this. But another technique Desi always does here is take another bowl with a strainer over it and then pass it through the strainer. And Desi, why am I doing this? I love how I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, Desi, please explain why I'm doing this. Yeah, I see them. If you see in the strainer here, it kind of catches the big chunks of uh, egg whites in there. And it'll- Probably because you didn't beat it very well. Thank you, Desi. All right, I'm gonna kill the heat. It's been about 20 minutes. Now you always know the quinoa is done when the seed unravels. Let me show you. See how that little tail is kind of hanging outside now? That's when you know it's done but it always takes about 15 or 20 minutes. All right, so that's done. Heat is off. Desi, what's next? Temper. Temper the egg yolks, okay? Do you know how to do that? <laughs> yes, Desi. I think I can figure out how to temper the egg yolks. Thank you for asking. We don't wanna make scrambled eggs. Use a ladle and just grab a little bit of the cooking liquid here. Now, keep whisking and stream in a little bit of the liquid. You have to keep whisking pretty hardcore here, otherwise it's gonna get scrambled. And what we're doing is we're slowly bringing the eggs up to temperature, then we could dump the whole thing into the pot. So now the tempered egg yolk mixture goes back into ye old pot and give it a nice mix up. Okay, now we gotta check for seasoning. Come on, don't be shy. <laughs> it does need some salt, but it does have a good lemon flavor. So I would say a good teaspoon of salt in here and some fresh pepper. How's the lemon flavor for you? Give a little more lemon. More lemon, right? These were very small lemons from Trader Joe's to be fair, but a regular size official lemon should do the trick. Last but not least, let's move on to Desi's famous lentil soup. Crazy, crazy easy to make, but always a winner around the house. Bring two quarts of water to a boil, then go in with one cup of lentils. One carrot that you roughly chopped, one small Yukon gold potato that you halved, and five cloves of garlic. Then add half a teaspoon of sweet paprika and half a teaspoon of dried thyme. Drizzle in two teaspoons of extra virgin olive oil and season it with 1.5 teaspoons of salt and a few cracks of black pepper. Bring that to a simmer and cook it for 25 minutes. Now grab all the veggies out and place them in a bowl. Add a little bit of the broth to make it saucy and then use your immersion blender or a blender and blend everything till it's nice and smooth and creamy, and then add that back to the pot. Check for seasoning, and you're done. And the only thing that can make this lentil soup better is a little garnish of parsley, just so I can tell the color difference from the butternut squash, which by the way, you can do this with black lentils, green lentils, yellow lentils, brown lentils, mix it up. You don't have to do the color coordination like we do. Let me get myself one sample of this. <clears throat> I went on the wrong pipe. <clears throat> How do you choke on soup? Is that even humanly possible? <laughs> All right, choking aside, that's awesome. It's just such a simple recipe. It's a classic Desi recipe. If you want all three of these, the recipes are down below in the description box along with the macros, storage instructions, reheating instructions, all those good stuff. Hey, it's so hot in here. It's like 90 degrees. This pot of bone broth has been going for the last 10 hours. It still has another four hours. We have three more pots in here. I'm Schmitz and my took us off in here. So subscribe to our channel if you want to see two more healthy and delicious meal prepping recipes. Check out the ones below. We gotta go. I'm gonna pass out. I'll see you next week. Until then, hashtag keep on cooking mad love. Peace.